Henry Ford was born in Springville, Wayne County, Michigan, USA. He was an automotive engineer. In 1915, American President Woodrow Wilson received Ford and praised Ford Motor Company. He was the first person in the world to mass-produce cars on an assembly line. Ford is an American car manufacturer. He founded Ford Motor Company in 1903, produced Model T cars, invented the assembly line production method, and made the United States a prominent car country. Later, he lost his advantage in the competition due to a miscalculation of market dynamics. After Henry Ford's death, a cardboard shoebox containing personal belongings was found under a bench in his family's laboratory. Inside the box was a sealed test tube with a neatly printed label reading, Thomas Edison's Last Breath. Ford admired Edison very much because, as early as 1896, Edison encouraged him to continue working on gasoline-powered cars. Most people scoffed at the idea at the time. Horseless vehicles had fascinated Ford since that momentous moment more than 20 years ago, when he was 13 years old. He was sitting next to his father near Dearborn, Michigan, at the time, in a farm wagon. Little Henry's eyes widened as he saw a motor vehicle driven by a steam engine and connected by a chain from the engine to the rear wheels along a country road. He had seen motors before. They were used on the farm to thresh corn and saw logs, but this was the first time he had seen a cart without a horse that moved itself. As Ford vividly recalled years later, the engine stopped to let his father's wagon pass first. I had jumped out of the wagon and talked to the engineer before my father knew what I was doing. From that day on, Ford never wanted to do farm work again. He learned to be a mechanic, worked as an agricultural machinery repairman, and ran a sawmill. In 1891, at the age of 28, he broke the news to his wife Clara that he had accepted a job as an engineer on the night shift for $45 a month at the Edison Lighting Company's Detroit Power Plant. He explained that it was an opportunity to gain knowledge about electricity in his long-term plans for gasoline engines. He needed to use electricity. Clara was devastated at the thought of moving to the city and leaving her new house in Dearborn, but she packed her bags without complaint. Henry had briefly explained to her that he planned to build a horseless cart, and she believed in it as firmly as he did. For the next two years, according to Ford's diary entries, he was so engrossed in the gasoline engine that he often forgot to collect his Edison factory paycheck. On Christmas Eve 1893, seven weeks after his son Edsel was born, and as Clara was busy entertaining her family the next day, Ford walked into the kitchen carrying the first complete engine. He put the engine in the sink and asked Clara to start it for him. He told her how to pour gasoline from a cup into the metal container that served as a carburetor, how to turn the auger that filled the inlet valve while he turned the flywheel. He hooked up the natural spark plugs to the electricity in the house and signaled Clara to start pouring oil. The engine, it had only a single cylinder, produced by a length of gas pipe, puffed and quivered violently, shaking the sink and shooting tongues of flame from its exhaust valve. Ford watched it spin for a few minutes. Then he waved Clara aside and stopped the engine. The engine was running, and that was all he needed to know. He immediately devoted himself to the study of the two-cylinder engine. The house Ford rented in Detroit was a two-family, half-occupied residence with a brick shed at the back where the tenants kept coal. Ford used half of his cabin as a workshop. It was here. At four o'clock in the morning on June 4, 1896, then he completed the first motor vehicle, pulled it out, and drove it along Great River Boulevard and on to Washington Avenue. Here it broke down with an ignition failure. Two months later at the Edison Convention in New York, Ford was introduced to Edison as the manufacturer of the car. Edison wanted to know more about this. He saw Ford's sketches on the menu and said, 
You've made a self-fueled, self-contained contraption. That's the thing. Hold on. Keep it up. Ford walked away from the party with a buoyant air. Ford didn't invent the car, but he was the first automaker to pursue the mass market, while most other automakers were designing expensive playthings for the rich. Ford wanted to make motor vehicles that were strong and simple in mechanics. Light in weight, and easy to assemble so that their price would be within the reach of the common man. He found the answer in the Model T, later known as the vintage Ford or cheap car, and the assembly line. The assembly line slashed the time to assemble the chassis from 14 hours to 1 hour and 33 minutes. As assembly plants were established across the country, Ford produced the Model T at a rate of 1.6 per minute, producing 15 million of the model in 19 years. Between 1917 and 1927, nearly half of the cars produced in the United States were Fords. Henry lowered the price drastically to make them more affordable, from $850 a piece in 1908 to $290 a piece in 1925. The Model T made the Ford Motor Company the brightest name in American business. Its incredible success is summed up in a story that House often tells. House was Ford's number one business manager James Cousin's sister. Cousins wanted to sell $200 worth of stock to her sister Rosetta, but she was skeptical. In the end, she only bought it for $100. Over the next 16 years, she received $95,000 in dividends. In 1919, when Ford bought out all the shares of the minority shareholders, her $100 stock sold for $260,000. Henry Ford was a memorable character like a novel. Franklin Roosevelt once invited him to a dinner at the White House with the King and Queen of England. Ford replied that he couldn't go because his wife's garden club was having a party that day. Ford was a collector of violins, McGaffey books, and various early American histories. He was also a bird observer, folk dancer, and follower of health and diet. He never allowed smoking in the factory or office. He ate carrots for days on end. When he specialized in a soy diet, he ordered not only soy soup and soy bread but also soy ice cream. Henry tried to dominate everyone around him except his wife Clara. His wife was a woman with independent opinions, and she always had the final say. She died in 1950, three years after her husband's death. Their marriage lasted 59 years, and they were thoughtful, devoted companions throughout those years. Whenever Ford walked through the doors of Fairlane, Dearborn's estate, he would stand in the hall and whistle. His wife would answer him, whether upstairs or in her favorite chair in the sunroom. During the day, they would both sit in the sunroom with two binoculars and an Audubon book on birds. They would spend the night alone together. She used to read to him 